apron this week. Serious shit. How's my hair look, mate? Hey guys, I'm Tom, and uh, you're watching Tasty Business. Right then, we are going to cook today a beef rib, so Cote de Boeuf, and that is uh, ribeye on the bone. So we're gonna grill that, and that's gonna be served with some slow roasted tomatoes, grilled sourdough, and a horseradish creme fraiche. First up, we're gonna do the slow roasted tomatoes. They take the longest. Um, they're about, take about three hours at 120 degrees, so get those going. Got a few different tomatoes kicking around here. Got a beef heart. You can see it looks like a, like a heart and a San Marzano. We're gonna cut these uh, in half, lengthways. Shouldn't really feel any resistance when cutting through a tomato with a, with a sharp knife. Um, so if you're having to saw at it with a knife, it is uh, blunt. So we're just gonna lay those out on a tray. So I'm using uh, three different types of tomato. Just like, you get different flavor from each one. Now, we've got the tomatoes like this. So we're just gonna go in, salt over the top of each one. Got a little bit of le pepper, a little pinch of uh, caster sugar. Okay, and then we're gonna go, it's an Italian olive oil from last year's harvest, 2020. Just put the tomatoes there. Um, and then we're gonna pick down some herbs and we're gonna slice nice uh, clove of garlic. We're just gonna take into really thin, thin slices and each tomato is gonna get a sliver of garlic on top of it and as thin as possible. Some of them you can give a couple. Um, I don't know, it's not really exact science. It's just you're getting a nice bit of flavor in there in the tomato whilst it's slow roasting. Last bit is we're gonna pick a little bit, a few thyme leaves, sprinkle them over the top of the tomatoes. Best way to do thyme, it's obviously growing in a nice long stalk because you just put thumb and forefinger, pull it down, and then you can just sprinkle it over the top. That's the final seasoning. This is gonna work beautifully with the beef. It's gonna be soft, juicy, and just slow, slow roasting them really intensifies that tomato flavor. They become, they become sweeter, they become soft, but they're also, they've retained a little bit of bite on the outside. Okay, so, now everything is on the tomatoes. Just clean, always, always clean down your board. Just get everything nice and ready for the next job. Always have a bowl for your little uh, rubbish bits. Literally, just before we go in, a little touch more olive oil. They're just gonna go in the oven now, 120 degrees for three hours. I'm going to the oven. Gonna make a horseradish creme fraiche quickly. Really simple, it's just horseradish, creme fraiche, Dijon mustard, and some lemon juice. Uh, this is horseradish. It's a long root, grows in the ground. Pick that up at your local green grocer and this goes beautifully with the beef and the tomatoes. Tomatoes work really well with horseradish as well, so that's why we're gonna do it. You're gonna up your game slightly. So first up, you gotta peel the horseradish. So this keeps in, keeps in the fridge well for a long time. Microplane, you don't want really chunky bits of horseradish. Get strong arms doing this. We're just gonna go in with a little bit of salt and then a juice of half a lemon. Get all that juice in. That's just gonna macerate with the, uh, with the horseradish. So mix that together. Mm. It's always good to taste because once you add, so I've added, it's just a horseradish and lemon, but it's good to taste at that point. And then you know what's changing as you're adding more and more. So you can see the flavors develop. The mustard in. And then add in creme fresh. That's actually perfect. So there's nice sharpness from the lemon, getting the warmth from the horseradish, good creaminess from the creme fresh. Fucking hell. Not too bad at this one. That's done. You can put that back in here and put it in the fridge. Right, like the barbecue, get the beef out. The 
star of the show is this beautiful Cote de Boeuf. This is a dairy cow imported from uh, the Basque country. The difference between these and your like belted Galloway or Longhorn or Hereford cows is these are eight years old when they're slaughtered, whereas normally like the beef that you'll eat, you would eat from the butcher or whatever, would be about two or three years old. That gives this like a slightly richer flavor. It's more fatty and uh, you can see like the amazing marbling fat running through the middle of the ribeye. It's just a different product and you, you're getting something that is unique. So we're gonna take the cap off and I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna mince that and we're gonna make a burger. I'm gonna leave quite a lot of this fat on, on the top because I like when you've carved that and you've got a nice soft fat. So I'm gonna leave the majority of that on and I'm gonna come between here. So that can, that's the cat. Spinal cord for the dog. Don't choke on it. So the grill's nearly ready. Charcoal's perfect. Make the burnt butter. This is just to rest the beef in when it's cooked. The butter, when you burn it, it gives off a really nice hazel nutty flavor. Burr noisette in French, and nutty butter. And we're just gonna crush a couple of cloves of garlic and chuck in a few sprigs of thyme. So, so get those garlics in and a good, good, good little good bit of uh, thyme. The aroma is so nice. So you can smell that when you put the garlic in, it's smelling the garlic and the thyme is really fragrant. Obviously, as it's heating, it's releasing all its oils and scents. And then the beef rests in there, it's gonna form our resting juices. We can just lift that off, put it on the side. Wait for the, uh, wait for the beef to be cooked. So now, it's uh, beef time. So we're gonna season up this beef with lots of uh, mold and salt. Good amount of salt. It's gonna take a few minutes to color on one side, turn it over a few minutes, and then we'll just rest it in the butter. And now we're going for a, we're going for a medium rare. The meat is at room temperature, and you can see how that's moving. It's just, it's nice and supple, but if it's hard, it's fridge cold. Therefore, you need, you need your meat at room temperature. So you're aiming to get this meat to 46 degrees, which is medium rare. And if it starts at three degrees, then it's got to jump 43 degrees to be cooked. Whereas this is probably around 16 degrees. And so it's only got to climb 30 degrees to be cooked. Whereas the other one's got to climb 43. So you'll just get an even cook all the way through. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for like just a beautiful pink all the way through. If the coals are too hot, these flames which are just licking up from the fat dripping down are going out quite quickly. If they were too hot, it would just be like a raging fire and your meat would just get covered in soot. Okay, so, so you see here, it's not, it's not burnt, it's, it's just crispy. It's not cooking really, really fast. It's getting a nice bark on the outside, nice skin, nice colour. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take that off now. I'm going to put it there to rest in the uh, burnt butter. So it's very important to leave this meat to rest now once you've taken it off the grill because you've, with the heat, the meat's contracted and now we just need to allow it to relax. So whilst that's resting, last thing we need to do is the sourdough. I'm gonna build this up. Grilled bread, bit of beef, bit of tomato, bit of horseradish on top of that. Fucking delicious. Olive oil on the bread. Probably like a centimeter thick you want this. Olive oil, rub it in. Smash that on, let it toast. When that's ready, we can carve the beef. Whilst the toast is toasting, I'm just gonna go and pick up these tomatoes. Just look at them, they've had three hours at 120. Starting to curl at the edges, nice and soft. It's nice down there, isn't it? Nice down there, nice down there. Okay, whilst that bread's just finishing off, we can carve up the beef. Okay, so. Beef's nicely rested. So a good way to check that this, uh, this meat's done is you have a little um, skewer almost. If you pop that into the middle, a couple of seconds, and you touch that on your lip, it basically wants to feel warm. I mean, that, that's perfect. If it's hot, it's overcooked. If it's cold, it's, it's raw. 
okay? Pick the bone up, that's the easiest way to do it. Just pick the bone up and then just run your knife along that bone. Some people don't like this fatty bit at the end, but I'm a big fan, it's almost like butter. However you like it, if you like it super thin or if you like it a bit thicker, I like mine not too thin. Look at that, that's what we're after. Pinkness. Nicely rested, beautifully pink. Okay, so, rest of that butter and the resting juices. Okay, now, just simply play up the tomatoes. Beautiful, warm, lovely oil, different sizes, different shapes. It's gonna go so nicely with the beef. Oh, just to finish those, I'm gonna finally chop a couple of chives just to go over the uh, tomatoes. With, chi with chives, you really wanna be going as fine as you can. Just not bash, not making them brown. Okay. All the juice and the oil from the tomatoes. Really delicious. Now we just got the sourdough. Just gonna cut them off. There we have it. Lovely family style whole beef rib. Tomatoes, a couple of tomatoes. Here we go with that. And nice wedge of sourdough. So we've got the dairy cow, horseradish creme fraiche, slow cooked tomatoes with chives, and some grilled sourdough. That looks pretty tasty. I'm gonna go in with the beef first with the horseradish. Mmm. It's juicy. Beautifully cooked. That's what I love to do. Tomato. Horseradish. Yeah, beef. Mmm. It's good quality ingredients. Cooked well. It's horseradish and beef. It's banging. That's tasty business. Mmm.